What if instead of wanting to rotate a curve around the x-axis, we want to rotate around some other horizontal line? This picture suggests the way to go about to that. When we rotated a curve around the x-axis to derive the integral formula, we looked at little rectangles like this. And when we took such a rectangle and rotated it around the x-axis, axis and got a cylinder, the function f of x became the radius of the cylinder. And when we got to this integral, the f of x squared term represents a radius being squared. This comes from pi r squared h, the volume of a cylinder. Here's the pi, here's the radius squared, here's the h. So in this context, when we'll talk about the radius, we'll mean the distance between the curve and the axis of rotation. If the axis of rotation happens to be the x-axis, then the radius is just the function. And we get this thing up here. But in general, the volume is pi times the integral from a to b of the radius squared dx. And as is so often the case with mathematics, I think an example will clarify things nicely. Let's use the example from the set of notes. Let's rotate y equals x squared 
from x equals one to x equals two, not around the x axis, but around y equals negative three. And let's use this formula to find the volume. Remembering that the radius in this formula is the distance between the curve and the axis of rotation. And we will draw a picture. Drawing a picture is an important part of these problems, in my opinion. Here's x squared. Here is the axis of rotation. And the radius is the distance from the curve to the axis. And let me write in, this is the curve x squared. So what is this distance? Well, we'll break it into pieces. This is y equals x squared here. That's the distance from the axis to the curve. And this is y equals negative three. So that distance is three. And the radius is three plus x squared. And now finding the volume, it might be easy or it might be hard, but at least setting up the integral is simple enough. Let's see, we are going from one to two. That provides our limits of integration. We want a pi out front. And then we want the radius squared. And the radius is three plus x squared. And this is our integral. How to take this integral. We don't seem to have the means to do a u substitution. What we could do is just foil this out first. The volume will then be the integral from one to two of nine plus six x squared plus x to the fourth. And now that we've foiled this out, we can just take each of these antiderivatives individually. The antiderivative of nine is nine x 
2x cubed one fifth x to the fifth evaluated from one to two. And now we plug in two, let's see, nine times two, 18, two cubed is eight, plus two is 16, two, four, eight, 16, 32 fifths minus, Nine plus two plus one fifth. And if we stick all of this into a calculator, we wind up with ninety one. Point to seventy four. So, um, ending this video by summarizing our method, the volume in general is pi times the integral of the radius squared and the radius is the distance from the curve to the axis of rotation. And usually, if you want to find the radius, your first step should be to draw a picture. Once we had this diagram, we were able to break this distance into pieces and find it without a huge amount of difficulty. If we didn't have this picture, Sure, finding the radius might have been rather less straightforward.